Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about Bloody April. I'll sort of do an unboxing. Um, back then they didn't have any YouTube videos for an unboxing. This is about a 40 year old game. And there's quite a few collectors out there trying to collect games like this. So I want to let them know what to look for if you're trying to get a uh, game like this and what to expect what's in the box if they don't know already. Now, if the box was brand new, and this is like a big size soap box here, um, with a very nice covered art. You'd see this and it'd be in shrink wrap. And on the back side here, you'd actually get the advertisement. I'll be a little close here. And feel free to like freeze the video and, and read in detail if you like. And some example of the unit types. Now this game is based on the Great ba Battles of American Civil War series. The actual standardization of that game was soon after this game called Pea Ridge. This was the second game in the series, the f or actually the third game in the series. The first one was Terrible Swift Sword. And when you open up the box, um, you get one rule set. And keep in mind, this is in a period of time where, before desktop publishing, so this is, um, but it's, so we got, and this is actually a well-preserved game. Uh, charts and tables. Uh, second set of that, same thing. Some roster sheets for the Union. Quite a bit of rosters here. For the Confederate. This particular game at the time wasn't it was sort of a mixed following um, simply because it was complex it covered a lot of complexities of that battle like the, the potential for heat exhaustion fatigue uh, covered ammunition depletion and along with the troop reduction so there's a lot of bookkeeping that some gamers may not be as interested in so the flow of the battle will be a little bit slower. And this is for the historical notes I'm showing right now. And the maps. And I'll open up the maps here in a moment. I'll just give a, a brief look at it. The counters. There's several sheets of counters, uh, and let me give a close-up of them. What I like about this era of gaming is that you could see the unit names and their formations very easily, and in the distance you could actually pick up what type of troops they are very easily. Now, there is a difference between this era of gaming and today's era of gaming. Um, against the counter sheets, against the map sheets, you get bright maps with, uh, with counters that are um, not as bright. In today's games, you probably see more brighter counters with maybe softer colored maps. Now, when they have games that have bright colored maps and bright colored counters, the counters tend to get more camouflaged with the game set. Okay, so this is actually... Um, Here's the full set of counters here. Let's open up the next one. Here's the Confederates group on the side. Get a close up to the leaders. And some of the troops.
Let me just show the back side since I didn't show it earlier. And then here's the informational counters, including strength loss. Then they have comes with counter trays. Um, to make it easy to pull out, I actually put, attach paper to the back of these things so I can just pull them up. The advantage of this is that if I have a lot of pieces of items in the, in the here, I could just easily just pull it up just like this. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and open up the maps. Give you a better idea what it looks like. This is a big map. And I'm not sure if I'll be able to get them all here on the, in the camera view. Let me clear the table a little bit. Gives you some idea what it looks like. It's not perfectly lined up. I'll have to get it on a plexiglass or mount it on a magnetic board. I'd make it all flat. But this is definitely a game you'd leave. Now, for your information, north is this direction. Okay. And as far as troop movement is concerned, Union forces are mostly in this area, and the Confederates are coming in from this direction. So here's a close-up of the map. I'm just pan over it very... so you can see a little bit more of the details and the charts. Good size map of the battlefield. So for those that like epic battlefields, large scale battles with lots and lots of counters, this is it. At least one of those big games. Now the series did follow several other games, and I'll just give you some, some examples. Um, one, the, the volume that actually started the series was this battle, the Battle of Pea Ridge, and it was followed up by Arrive on Washington, and then later Wilson's Creek. And there are several other games that followed in this in the series, but this gives you the same, um, some idea of what followed this game.